Welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is another 10 military survival skills in 10 minutes. Stand by. Straight from the manual, we're going to have an improvised candle or stove. We're going to need some sort of container, in this case a rations can, some sort of fuel, gasoline or jet fuel, and then a wick, in this case a cotton rope, and then sand to create our improvised stove or candle simulating a downed aircraft and what they may have in a survival situation. We just take our can, create those air holes at the top, put in our wick at the bottom, make sure it stands up straight, add a layer of sand to the bottom, and then pour in our fuel, completely soaking the sand and then getting a little bit of that fuel on our wick. We add another layer of sand on top so that only the wick will light when we actually light our candle or stove. And then once we're ready to go, we can take a piece of tape or a stick, light it on fire, light our candle or our stove, and then place our canteen cup over top to cook our water or our food for a nice meal in a survival situation. Potassium permanganate and vegetable glycerin, great fire starting tools. Make a base with a piece of bark, add potassium permanganate crystals, and then vegetable glycerin. And we get an exothermic reaction once we stir it up for smoke and then fire to get a fire going, especially in a swampy, wet, humid jungle environment like the one we're in today. But if all we have is a potassium permanganate and maybe a little sugar from our rations pack or from our MRE, we can use a little trick to get a fire going with the same materials. Create a mortar and pestle from a log, car make a divot, then we can use our digging stick, put in a one to one ratio of potassium permanganate and sugar into that small divot in our log, and then with our digging stick, adding downward pressure, we create a little bit of friction by twisting back and forth, and we've got fire using friction with potassium permanganate and some sugar, easy. The angle-headed flashlight or L-shaped flashlight saves the day again with another improvised fire starting technique. We're going to use the bulb this time because these flashlights have incandescent bulbs inside, meaning there's a filament that heats up. We can use that heat combined with the char cloth we made from our last survival video to get a fire going. We disassemble the housing compartment, remove the bulb from the flashlight, and then using a rock, a piece of cotton as cushion, and then our survival knife crack the bulb to expose the filament without breaking the filament, reassemble the flashlight, leaving the housing compartment exposed, take our char cloth, make a tinder bundle, and then apply the char inside the housing compartment of the parabolic lens, touching the filament of the bulb, turn the flashlight on, and it'll ignite our char cloth, add that to our tinder bundle, blow it into flame, and we've got fire. Another improvised survival skill to get a little bit of water is something called a transpiration bag. We're going to collect up standing green leafy material like this sugar maple, tie some of the branches together, then we're going to take out a plastic bag from our kit and wrap that plastic bag around the green vegetation. We're going to tie that off, but before we do, we're going to place the hose from our camelback inside that bag with the opening end all the way down at the bottom where our water is going to collect. We're then going to tie off the bag, expose it to direct sunlight, and leave it in the sunlight all day. And then once we come back toward the end of the day, the condensation in the bag will collect and drip to the bottom of the bag where our hose is. And then we can just access that camelback hose, turn it on, and get a drink of water from the bottom of that transpiration bag. Too easy. Water is going to be one of the most important survival priorities, especially on a day like today where it is hot, there is a heat index, it is humid, and we have full sunlight. It's going to be incredibly important as well with this scummy, nasty pond we have in front of us. What we can do is go on the opposite bank, slightly downhill away from the water, and dig a hole into the earth and let the natural runoff or the underground water collect in that hole. We're going to create what's called a sediment hole 
a coyote well or an Indian well and let that water collect in our hole. It's going to be scummy and nasty, but that's okay. We take some grass, lay that grass on top of the water once we've collected enough, and then with our canteen cup, simply press down and collect that water. And then we can move to either boil that water or place it in a filter to filter it before boiling that water to make it safe to drink. With the nasty water we collected from our Indian well or sediment hole or coyote well, we can create an improvised filter to filter that water first before boiling it to make it safe to drink. Today we're going to use a plastic bottle, but we could use any container for this. As long as we have some charcoal, a military cravat, some sand and moss, we can create a filter. We cut off the bottom, make some holes in the cap to allow the water to flow, add our cravat, and then add charcoal on top of that, at least two inches in layer, add some sand on top of that, filling in all the pockets, and then add moss on top of that to create our filter, leaving a little room at the top for water. We can suspend that filter from a tree or from a tripod and then simply pour our water into the filter and allow the filter to absorb the water and then finally to let the water move through the filter and drip into our canteen cup. Once we have our water collected, place it over fire to boil and it's safe to drink. Too easy. Fire is very important in a survival situation and on a day like today with full sunlight we can take advantage of that sunlight to get a fire going and our military binoculars can actually help us out with that. We can take our binos, unscrew one of the forward lenses and use that lens as a solar lens or a fire lens to get ignition with a fine tinder bundle. We make our tinder bundle and then form the center of it and macerate it to make a very fine center that will pick up the sun's rays and heat and form a coal. Get out in full sunlight and then find the perfect angle and direction from the sun to the lens to form the smallest bead of light into the center of our tinder bundle. Eventually we'll start to see smoke and we continuously work that in small areas to produce an ember. Once we have an ember created, all we have to do from there is blow that ember into flame with our grass and we create a fire. Too easy. In the event an aviator's got to bail out of their aircraft, they're going to have that parachute to bring them safely to the ground. That parachute is going to become an incredible survival tool. There are a lot of things you can do with a survival parachute, just like this Charlie 9 Korean War era parachute. The gores come in different colors, white for winter, green for forest, tan for desert, and then orange for signaling. And there are a lot of things we can do with this parachute for survival. One of the things we can do is create a simple shelter like a polis teepee. All we have to do is lay out our parachute on the ground, stake off the gores with the suspension lines, throw a rope up over a tree hanging above our shelter, attach that rope to the apex of the parachute, simply pull up until we have the teepee shape, tie off the rope to keep it secure, and then we have our polis teepee shelter set up where we can climb inside, get warm, get out of the wind and rain, cook some food and have a hot drink and survive. That military mess spoon cannot be overlooked as a survival tool. We need to improvise, look at things in different ways, and think outside the box. And this military mess spoon can help us do that. We can use this mess spoon, obviously, for digging if we need to, but we can also use it as a bearing block for our bow drill primitive fire set to get an ember going and then build a fire with that bow drill set out in the wild in survival. But we can also use this spoon to get into cans of food using it as a can opener if we are without a can opener. We simply press down, rocking the spoon back and forth until we get a nice opening in the top of that can and then work it like a regular can opener, opening the can in a circle to get at that food inside to get a nice meal. And we can also use that spoon using a little college trick as a bottle opener to open that bottle of beer and get a drink. Now this is what I call survival. Now that the rain is gone and we have a soaking wet parachute that was 13 pounds and is probably closer to 30 pounds now with water weight, we need a way to carry this out of the field. If we don't have our rucksack, 
we can simply create a square frame pack or just a square pack using our tarp to hold all of our gear. We roll up our parachute, leaving the green or tan gores on the outside to camouflage the white and the orange. And then simply lay out our tarp, place our chute in the center of our tarp along with our equipment, and then fold the sides over our parachute and our equipment, roll the bottom up, fold it over top, roll the top down and fold it over the entire pack. We can use our cordage and our webbing from our mountaineering kit to construct the pack, tie it off so it is secure, add the straps and simply place the backpack or the square pack over our back, tie a knot around front with the straps and we're good to go. All right guys, that was another 10 military survival skills in 10 minutes. I really hope you like this video. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me and for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another awesome video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.